Alright guys, have a smaller crowbar laying around the shop. Got the Ford fired up. Let's turn it into something cool. Alright, we're first going to put it in the forge, burn all this paint coating that it has all over it. So we'll put it in there, pull it out, scrape it with the wire brush. We hit that on both sides, and then now we'll start hammering away. Got this awesome guillotine tool my buddy Drew made for me from Drew Does Art. His link for his channel will be in the description. I'm just going to go ahead and set the uh, the marking for where the blade is going to start. Alright, so we're going to start flattening out the bar. And uh, let's start off here just with the flattening hammer. One of my most used hammers here. So uh, we're just going to start working on both sides, start to get it nice and flat. And then, then we can actually start creating some width in the blade and forming the tip. Now as you're flattening out your piece, I always try to turn it on its side to make sure everything stays nice and square. So I'll do this on both sides for a bit as I'm flattening out the piece. Alright, we're going to start off with the rounding hammer, profiling this tip. So, as you're rounding your tip, always make sure to turn it on each side to flatten out all the marks as well. So I'll start using these rounding type of hammer strokes, as you see what I'm doing there. Start actually rounding the steel into a tip. Alright, we're going to start actually creating some width in the blade here. So I am going to use my flattening hammer, and as you see the strokes that I'm doing here, I'm actually going out to in, out to in, on both sides. You'll see it's starting to actually create some width in the blade. Now, this was definitely a challenge to hold on to. I dropped it several times. Just the way that the hexagonal shape is from the curve bar. So, uh, I mean, it does happen. You are going to drop your pieces in the shop. So make sure you be careful about it. I want to continue to go back and forth, creating some width in this blade. I always like to tilt it on its side as I'm doing that to see how even my bevels are going to be and what kind of thickness the blade is actually going to be before I start grinding. Now what I'm doing here is I'm actually going to start working on the spine of the knife to give it a nice taper and you'll see that I'll actually start straightening out the blade the more and more you do that on both sides. I'll work this for a couple of heats until I get the kind of desired thickness of the spine and also the desired you know, shape of the blade. I almost went with this curve in it, but I decided I wanted it to be straight. Um, just because that's kind of what I was shooting for. Now I'm just going to take the rounding hammer and just smooth out any hammer marks left on the blade. And now we're going to go ahead and quench to non-magnetic. And uh, whenever we quench, just kind of use a cutting and moving motion while it's being quenched to avoid any warps. 
and should be nice and straight and ready for grinding. Now I got here a nice used 36 grit belt on the 2x42. And uh, I'm just going to smooth out the edge so we can get a nice flat edge to work with before we start grinding in our bevels. And then uh, put a nice little finger groove in there. That way it can show us where we're going to be starting our bevels, where our edge is going to be started at. Alright, we're going to start grinding in our bevels with that used 36 grit. And now throughout the past five years or so that I've been freehand grinding, I do learn whatever you're doing your bevels, uh, it's always kind to keep your elbows tucked close to your body and just kind of move your hips. So it is all in the hips. Another key reminder while grinding bevels, just light pressure, even pressure, keep that steady angle, and uh, let the tool do its job. All right, now we're gonna throw a 120 grit belt on and start smoothing out those lines from the 36 grit belt. Get a nice finish on the knife before uh, we move on down to the Scotch Bright belts. Put a nice mirrored finish on it. Now we got the pink scotch bright belt on, and this is going to put a nice mirrored finish on there. really like the way these belt sleeve finishes on my knives, and it smooths out any of those grind lines left from the previous belts. Now that we got the bevels uh, ground in and we got a nice finish going on, I'm going to put a 400 grit belt on, take the platen off, and we're going to start uh, put, putting our edge into the blade. So we're going to create the burr on both sides, and then we'll move on up to 800 and then 1,000 grit. Just real light pressure when you're starting to put your edge on, and then you can actually see the burr starting to form on the far side. So we're going to keep chasing that until we move on up to the 800 and the 1000 grit. Now lastly, we'll put the 1000 grit belt on. And again, just going to keep chasing that burr back and forth until we get a nice sharp edge. All right, let's see how sharp it is. Yep, that's a sausage, and he's about to meet his maker. And it will cut. All right, going to finish it off with some boiled linseed oil. Just going to lather this up. Put some on the spine and on the blade. Gives it a nice look. Really starting to enjoy uh, making these awesome-looking knives and stuff out of tools. Um, something I really like doing. If there's something that you want to see me make out of a tool or a specific tool, let me know in the comments below and I'll give it a shot.